Now, there was a question, and I can't remember if I've assigned it. So people who finished the exercise, please tell me if you did. Um, there was a question that looked like this. y equals x cubed minus 1. You had to find the derivative of this, which of course we can all just say, which is, yeah. is it ringing a bell? Yeah. Okay, good, okay. Even if you haven't done this question yet, that's okay. Um, where I'm gonna take a bit of a shortcut to get through here. They then say, okay, take this thing and rearrange it so that x is the subject, okay? Now we could do that at length, but I'm just gonna go straight to the result because I've written it down just here. Okay, it really doesn't take that much. You've got this, okay, so all I've done is I've moved the constant and I've adjusted the power. And then this, I can now differentiate the other way around, right? Instead of differentiating y with respect to x, I can differentiate x with respect to y. So I've switched around which variable is which, at least in terms of the algebra of the equation, okay? So on this, I can work out dx or dy. It's a simple chain rule, okay? What's going to happen? Third comes out the front. Y plus one, y plus one. Power Three. decreases by one. <coughs> Excuse me, watch for that. And then I multiply by the derivative of the inside because it's chain rule, right? So in this case, that doesn't have an effect. All right, that's nice. That's fine. Then when you look at this, though, I kind of know what y is. Like, I started this with a definition for y. Okay, it's kind of weird to leave things in terms of y. This looks a little bit awkward. So I don't have to stop there, right? I can actually say, I'll do it over here. Since y is defined as x cubed minus one, this backwards derivative, right? this backwards derivative, I can go further with it. I can substitute it out and get something that's a little more familiar to me, okay? And I'll notice a pattern. Watch what happens. y of course is x cubed minus one. Don't skip the substitution. We've been pinged by that recently, haven't we? Okay. Once I have a look at that, what's happening inside the brackets? Yeah, stuff cancels. That's nice. And then I can do one more thing. Index laws. What's going to happen? I multiply these two together. Right. So this is one third x to the minus two. I can just rearrange to make it a little more familiar because a negative power, of course, means it goes on the denominator, doesn't it? Okay, now that should make you suspicious, right? Because, hold on, I did this, and then I did this. And if you, see, you recognize it, you're like, wait, I now feel slightly ripped off. <laughs> I did all of this calculus, but in fact, all I needed to do was to turn this upside down. Now, please note this. This is the important result, right? Therefore, dy on dx times dx on dy equals 1, right? Or I could state it, I could equally state it like this, that one derivative is the reciprocal of the other one. Now, this is actually really, really important, okay? And it's kind of strange. It's, it's stranger than you might expect. Because what this is showing is, d, d on dx, right, like this thing, this is an operator. This means do something to something else, right? Just like sine is and log is and all those other things, right? But we've written it as a fraction. Now, what this is telling us is that even though it's an operator, it behaves just like a regular fraction. And we've kind of been taking advantage of this in chain rule already, right? When we've been doing stuff like this, um, dy on du times du on dx, we've been, just been treating du as an actual number and then cancelling, right? And not noticing that du is not a number. It's this weird, infinitesimally small thing that, like, how does it behave? It's a bit like infinity. In fact, it's a lot like infinity. And we know we can't just throw infinity around like any regular number. For instance, you can do things like this to infinity, right? That's not a regular number. You can do things like this to infinity. Uh, or you can do things like this to infinity, right? Depending on the infinity you're looking at. So infinity is not a normal number. You can't do normal things to it. But this guy, these infinitesimals, you can. Now, I'm going to take advantage of that with the inverse functions. Because when, you, when I did this, right, see this? <coughs> Basically what I was doing is what I regularly do when I'm trying to find an inverse. Okay, when I'm trying to find an inverse. So let me go a little bit more space and show you what I mean. Um, all of this, all of this label it, let's call this the original function, okay? This is the original function. Okay, so on my original function, I have a defined y, I have a defined dy on dx, 
and I have a defined dx on dy. And everything that we've just written on the board only relates to that function. Okay? Now, let's talk about its inverse. Let's talk about its inverse. Okay? I've already done all the legwork I need to know what the inverse function is. What is the inverse function of this particular one? Think about it, it's on the board. I even put a box around it. Almost. That one. It's this guy with one crucial difference. I've switched the inputs and outputs, I've switched the x and the y, right? So I can say for the inverse and only for the inverse, y is not defined like that, y is defined like this. Okay? So this is a new function, so new rules are in operation, right? Now, have a look at this guy here, right? This is dx on dy for the original function. So how do I take this and use it over here? Well, just like I did for this, I have to swap everything, right? That's what it means to do the inverse. So therefore, I'm going to take this dx on dy, and I'm going to make a statement about this dy on dx, not to be confused with this dy on dx, right? This one's in the original world, and this is in my inverse world, okay? So everything is switched around. It's just this guy, right? One on three y squared. Right? Everything is switched around, okay? But of course, I know what y is. Uh, y is this guy, right? So this is 1 on 3 x plus 1 to the power of a third, right? Two squared. Sorry, squared. Two thirds. Um, two, thirds. two thirds. It's that squared, okay? Now just look at this for a second. This is in a bit of a weird form, right? I'm going to write it in a form that I hope will show you the connection a little more. Where did that come up? Dx on Yeah, we got this from chain rule, right? Chain rule. But we didn't invoke chain rule this time. I invoked the fact that, hey, I know how this function works, and therefore I know how the inverse function will behave. Does that make sense? So I kind of skipped the chain rule part. Now in this case, because it's a simple example, right, it's the one they gave you, it's like, well, I could have easily have just looked at this and then differentiated by chain rule. That was not complicated, okay? But when you start to put exponentials and logs and sine term, and it takes out all the trigonometry in there, it starts to become very advantageous to try and get away from chain rule because it, it gets a lot messier than just two or three lines. Okay? So, therefore, what's my conclusion? What's the property I'm going for? Okay? If you have a function and you can work out its derivative, right, if it's easy to differentiate, then all you need to do, you can write this one with me, to find the derivative of the inverse, You're going to do two things, okay? To get from this guy, which is easy to find, right, of the original function, how do I turn this into this? What things did I do? First thing, before I went to the inverse idea, is I took it and I just, I turned it upside down, right? I did not, in fact, want dy on dx. I wanted this guy, dx on dy, right? So firstly, I take the reciprocal. The reason I took the reciprocal is because I want the one where the x's and y's are in the reverse position from what I want. Because that's what inverses are, with the x and the y in the reverse positions. Okay? So then here, you can either say it as reverse the positions of x and y, or swap the inputs and outputs, the x's and the y's. I'm going to say inputs and outputs because they might not be x's and y's. They could be r's or t's or theta's or anything like that, but we just want to swap them. That's all an inverse means. Okay? Then, lastly, and this is kind of um, optional, so I'll put a star on it. If it is relevant, if it helps you with the particular question at hand, at this point here, I've done these two steps. I took the reciprocal, look, it's upside down, right? And then I swap the inputs and outputs. See, there's a y there, it's not an x anymore. I can go to this step. What is this step? What am I doing here? Substitution. Mm, I'm substituting in the, um, the new function, the inverse, right? right? So if appropriate or if helpful, substitute in the inverse function. Because that will put everything in terms of your independent variable, which is the way things usually are. Okay? 
Okay, like I said, there are some um, there's some weird ways to use this, and you'll see them in 1A in the questions that I have not assigned. Okay, one last one. Uh, we looked at increasing and decreasing, the derivative. Now we're going to look at symmetry. So we're talking about functions, right? Don't we have to yep. differentiate after? No, we just Ah, you already have. Okay. Right. To find, take the reciprocal, I, sh I suppose you could say, of the derivative. That's what we're talking about. Okay. Right? Of the original derivative. Right? Which is that step which skips the chain rule part for you. You're like, ha, huh, ta-da, right? Yeah. Um, so if you want to avoid it, that's the way that you do it. 